How has podcasting evolved within your practice as an educator? Thank you. Um, initially, podcasting was a means of delivering content quickly, simply, in parallel to, but separate from, my actual classroom teaching. Now, initially, for the first couple of years, that's how it stayed, and it was highly effective. It was a highly effective means of giving learners content but in fact, it was content they already had. It was just repackaged in a slightly different format because I did have a genuine concern about accessibility of the tool. And you know, if the podcast was the only means that learners had access to certain bits of information, that seemed um, quite inappropriate and, and quite, um, well, quite counterintuitive, really, in terms of what the point of the podcasting was. Eventually, I found something really quite amazing happening, which was that... Learners started to request podcasts, which was just fantastic. They'd start to ask me, you know, by email or corridor conversations, can we have one on this, can we have one on that? I also started to drop into the podcasts phrases and terms which I knew were only delivered in the podcast as a kind of impact measurement. And what I found is I started hearing those things said back to me or maybe even written in work and communicated back to me. And, and there seems to be an overwhelming use of the podcasts, not just so many learners have clicked on and downloaded, but actually learners had used them to the extent that they were using the terminology and the phraseology back. And that for me was a real, a real kind of transitional moment, I think. I mean, it was a real kind of light bulb moment, it was a critical incident, because suddenly I was hearing back the very phrases that I knew could only have been delivered through the podcasts, to such an extent it was telling me that they were actually leading to effective learning, teaching, revision, whatever. So the next step was to get learners to not just request podcasts, but also make their own. And that was an interesting experiment. You know, some learners were quite reticent, which I completely understand, you know, having to get over that whole, is that really what I sound like? Uh, or even just the whole naturalness of saying things off the cuff rather than having things absolutely dead scripted. But the ones who did engage with that as a process really felt they learnt an awful lot from it. And what I found was I had learners working in small groups, working and revising together, who would then make podcasts for each other, which I could then upload and share to a much wider audience beyond their immediate classmates. And that was highly, highly effective. In the end, we turned the tables on the podcasting and we didn't have them as parallel to sessions, but we did in the end make them compulsory because access was so great and we made them compulsory before and after sessions. Now, I didn't session capture. You know, I didn't clip a little time icon, do my lesson, record the lesson, and then upload it, which I could have done. But, you know, lessons are lessons, they're not lectures. So actually, if I recorded a teaching lesson, all there'd be is just hectic, chaos, messy, loud background noise, because, you know, teaching is noisy and learning is noisy, and it really wouldn't have, have actually kind of told you anything. But I could make recordings and say to learners, for homework, before you come into the session next week, listen to this, and then we'll use this as the means to start the lesson. So the podcast became like the starter and also an assessment of prior learning. I also could get them to make podcasts or write scripts for podcasts as a kind of plenary to the session. So we're beginning to kind of build their own use of podcasts into sessions in quite a formal way, rather than keeping them as kind of separate and parallel to the actual kind of classroom experience. Um, eventually, access was so great, you know, computer suites, speakers, headphones, bookable from the library, etc., that we actually did make whole lessons available on podcast, and we'd book out computer rooms, and learners would work at their own pace, and I'd be there walking around the room, but there'd always be other podcasts for them to listen to. And some podcasts were instructional, um, you know, do this task, do that, now you've done this, do this. Some podcasts, again, were about summary or delivery of um, key course content. So the podcasting really evolved from an experiment to something which in the end became quite, quite solid and quite instrumental, quite integral, really, to the normal business of teaching and learning in a blended learning classroom.